Hello and welcome to the first session of What's the Librarian Reading of 2021. Today I would like to talk about um, uh, an adult fiction selection called The Lost and Found Bookshop by Susan Wiggs. This was a great read. So if you are looking for something that checks off all the boxes for um, culture, art, history, uh, romance, um, an easy read, a fun read. This one checks all the boxes. Definitely I was sad that this book ended. So to give you a little idea of what this book about is about, <clears throat> the main character is Natalie and the story opens with um, Natalie at a reception uh, at her job. She works at a winery in um, like the San Francisco area in California. And uh, she had just gotten a promotion and they were having a reception in her honor to celebrate her promotion and to celebrate this big um, account that they had just gotten. Uh, so it opens and you're at this reception and you find out that you know, she doesn't really like her job, but it is security. It gives her a good paycheck, um, good health insurance, it pays her bills, and she has security that she felt like she didn't have growing up. Uh, so she doesn't really like it, but this is really her choice and, um, because it meets those needs for her. So she goes through the reception and um, we find out that she had invited both her boyfriend, whose name was Rick, and her mom, whose name was Blythe. And uh, Rick is an aviator and he had a flight test that day, uh, a solo flight test, and wasn't able to come and her mom doesn't come and we find out that that's maybe uh, normal in their life that throughout Natalie's growing up years her mom did not show up at a lot of important events for Natalie so she wasn't really surprised that her mom didn't show up but uh, after the reception she goes to the bathroom and while she's in there some co-workers enter and they don't know that she's in there and of course they're talking terrible things about her and she hears all of this stuff about how um, she's a toxic leader and um, they're so glad that she's not um, down in the, the work room with them anymore that she has her own desk uh, across the hall and in her own office so that they don't have to deal with all of her toxicity and all of this stuff and so um, they leave of course she's just like in shock that she had heard all this and she doesn't really like her job anyway, and this just makes it even worse. And um, so she heads home and um, she had an invitation from a friend to visit for drinks and stuff after the reception. So she went over to her friend's house and just kind of, you know, vented with her friend about all this stuff that had just happened and that her boyfriend and her mom didn't show up and the coworkers were talking bad about her and just kind of gets it off her chest and decides to head home and you know, cry it out and eat some ice cream and whatever. Um, and on the way home, she turns on the radio and she finds out that um, a plane in the aviation company that her boyfriend works at, uh, so the, the pilot and a passenger had gotten into a plane wreck and had both died. Well, she knew it wasn't her boyfriend because he was in a solo flight. Um, and so, but she thought she would go to the company and just see if she could offer assistance to the family or whatever had happened and gets there and finds out that her boyfriend did not have a flight that day and um, he had picked up her mom as a surprise and they were flying up to the winery from San Francisco and um, they were going to surprise her and he was actually going to propose to her. So she finds all of this out uh, at the aviation company from strangers and essentially and um, her life is just wrecked. So, enter then, like, like that's like the preface of the story. Um, she heads to her mom's business, which was um, the Lost and Found Bookstore. And she takes some time off from her work and she goes to stay at the bookstore and see um, what the next steps should be. Should she, um, try to keep the bookstore going and this becomes her new career? Should she um, 
sell it and go back to her stable life. Um, but there's a lot of complexities involved in either decision. And one of them is her grandpa. She calls him Grandy. And he actually lives in the building of the bookstore. The building has been in their family for many years, 1800s at some point, I think. And his family has lived in that building since then and in some respect. And so one of the complexities is what to do with Grandy because he is uh, in early dementia, but it is rapidly, his mind is rapidly deteriorating. He often doesn't remember who she is. Um, he often, or Natalie, who Natalie is, his granddaughter, he often thinks that she's his daughter. And so um, every day she kind of has to go fresh into this place of grief with him where she tells him, I'm not your daughter, I'm your granddaughter, your daughter died in a plane crash, and I'm here to see what we can do. And just every day it's like this brand new, horrific news of his daughter's death, and um, she has to go through that with him. And so she's working through you know, what to do with Grandy. Does she put him in a nursing home? And, um, you know, does she try to be his caregiver? You know, what options does she have in that? So on, she's, she's trying to process all of this and the grief is just so raw and um, she hasn't had really anyone that she can personally talk to. Um, you know, her boyfriend's gone, her mom is gone, her friends-ish that she um, thought she had at work really betrayed her. And um, so the grief is just so raw and she hasn't had anyone to talk to. And she steps outside the bookstore and a truck pulls up and on the side of the truck it says hammer for hire and um she's just paying attention to what's going on but the the um man who owns the truck he's that's his company hammer for hire his name is peach he gets out and he just starts engaging in conversation with her because he can tell that she is um really upset and she just unloads on him like she just can't stop the tears and she she um, just kind of you know this is my life right now and I'm a mess and I don't know what to do and um, he's just a, a kind stranger and uh, really just lends her his ear and a shoulder to cry on it turns out though that he actually was coming to the bookstore his her mom had hired him prior to her death to come and do some restoration work in this building and so much of this book is the development of their friendship, which uh, he ends up being really just a solid person for her in her life. Um, going through this grief and also dealing with um, just other personal issues that she had um, growing up and in relationships. And uh, he just becomes a really great friend to her. And that friendship is, uh, was my favorite to watch in this book. She does also have other relationships. She meets an author and she um, starts dating this author and um, he is like a multimillionaire and she's, she's a struggling bookstore owner. And um, he takes her on these fantastic dates and we as the reader get to go along with her. And um, the author of this book writes it so well that you, absolutely feel like you are um, rubbing elbows with the rich and famous as she goes on this date these dates with this multimillionaire. Uh, she describes the, the um, hors d'oeuvres that are served and the drinks that they're drinking and the scenery and um, the staff people and you 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 feel like you're there and she um, I think if I, I've never been to California or San Francisco, but I think if I had, or if you have uh, the places that she visits, I think you would recognize and be like, yeah, this is, I can totally see this in my mind. But even having not been there, it was like I was there. Um, in another situation, she ends up going to a black tie cultural event in Chinatown. And uh, again, the description is like, you're there, you're in this fantastic 
rich and famous cultural event. Uh, and, and so you get to see the, the cultural exchange and the artistic expression of the artwork that they're there to see and um, the people that are there to, it's a fundraising event. So the, the rich people that are there to go to this uh, event and how she is more relatable, at least to me, in that she's, um, you know, she has a meager income and she gets by and she's happy there, but there's this whole other lifestyle that she she gets to enter into and um, by proxy we do too. And so it really does, it really does hit all the, check all the boxes of art and culture and history and um, romance in this book. But before I stop, I want to talk about why this book is called The Lost and Found Bookshop. So like I said, they have lived in this building for um, since, at least in th the family has lived in this building since somewhere in the 1800s. And um, there has been a family story that there is treasure in the building. And um, Grandy is losing his memories but he remembered that Natalie's mom, Blythe, had said that she had come across some journals of Grandy's great-grandmother. And one of the things that he absolutely wanted to do before either he completely loses memory or, or before he passes away is he wants to read those journals. And so Natalie thinks that maybe it was just a fabrication of his imagination that he thinks he has that memory, but it's not really there. But it just so happens that Peach is building a closet and he finds the journals. And um, so Natalie and Grandy go through the journals. And so we as the reader step back into history as the characters in the book are stepping back into history. And we find out um, what had happened with Grandy's great grandmother and um, how it ties to the building. So in many ways, there's like literal lost and found. So they're finding things in the building. Um, so that's one reason why it's called the Lost and Found Bookshop. But it's also a, um, uh, I can't think of the word. It, it's also a, um, it's not literal in the sense that uh, the lost and found are also the characters in the story. So as Natalie um, goes through the process of grief and goes through the process of deciding what to do with her life and goes through the process of going, being in relationships with uh, men again after her boyfriend had passed away. And, um, so she in many ways was lost and is now found. Um, Grandy, who is every day, he's losing a little bit more, is also finding parts of him as the, like, as they read the journal and as other things show up in the bookshop or in the building that he remembered. And now it's all coming together for him in ways that he had wanted before his death. And the, um, the staff at the bookshop, um, I, I didn't get to talk about them, but um, they have, we meet them too. And we, we get to take a little bit of like a sideways into their life as well. And we, we learn that they also were lost and are found because of situations that happen in the story. Um, anyway, all that to say, if you are looking for a really good read, I highly recommend The Lost and Found Bookshop by Susan Wiggs. It is very, very good and would be an excellent way to spend a few hours on a weekend taking a trip into a lifestyle of the rich and famous, uh, a different culture, um, appreciation of art and history, and um, it, it's just all around fun. Thank you.